OK, so page 225, we're looking at question one. Here, Claudio has fallen in love with Hero and is asking Benedict for advice. Benedict says, do you want me to talk to you like I'm in love or would you have me speak after my custom? So in the way of my habit as being a professed tyrant to their sex. So in other words, in a way that is treating women poorly and like uh, habitually uh, verbally abusing women, not treating them kindly. So question one asks, why does he do this? Why does he behave like this toward women? Could there be some reason in his past? A few groups took this question and they all agreed that maybe he had suffered some kind of uh, heartbreak in romance in his past. And that because he had gotten hurt in the past, he is kind of afraid to fall in love again. So he treats women poorly to push them away so that they would not be interested in him. And part uh, another possible way to look at this is maybe in that past relationship, he blames himself. So pushing women away could also be trying to protect women from himself in his own thinking. Um, so this brings up an interesting point. People who behave poorly often do so out of fear. So even though he calls himself a tyrant, he's actually a coward. He's doing this because he's afraid of women and afraid of love. I think this is something very important to remember. When you meet someone who's mean or abusive, it's often because they are afraid of something or they had been hurt in the past or they think that they themselves are not very worthy. Uh, in psychology, the, we call this self-sabotaging behavior. Um, of course, that does not mean that this kind of behavior is OK, but it does mean that uh, that person is probably not aiming at you personally. It's probably from some of their own issues in their life. So uh, you don't have to, you, you can use this to try not to be so hurt if something like this happens. And as this play shows, even someone like Benedict can end up falling in love. Uh, but first they have to face their demons, have to face their fears. OK, hey, question two. Nobody took this question. Why do you think the prose turns into verse at 11278? Let's take a look. We are now on page 226. So the beginning of the play, it's all prose. Those is Sanwen. And you can tell because the line never breaks. It keeps going and going for the whole paragraph. But suddenly here, Claudio says, my liege, which means my lord, Dringju, uh, your highness now may do me good. So he's asking Don Pedro for a favor. And Don Pedro says, my love is thine to teach. So my favor, uh, will, I will give you my favor if you tell me how. Love here means favor. And teach means like give me information. So my love is thine to teach. I will help you if you tell me how. Teach it, but how? All you have to do is tell me how to help you. 
and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. So if you tell me how to help you, you will see how good it is to learn something that will do you good, even if it's hard to learn. It's a kind of pun on the uh, word teach. So before this, even Don Pedro speaks in prose. 连君主都是用散文在说话。So why at this point does it become verse? 为什么突然变成韵文 ？What's so special about this part? Well, before this, uh, we were getting an introduction to the main characters. We were meeting all of the important people. We were observing how they talk, how they behave. But at this point, the main plot starts to occur. The important events start to happen. Claudio here is about to ask Don Pedro to chase Hero for him. It's something very important to Claudio. He loves Hero. He wants to be with her for the rest of his life. So the verse here tells us that Claudio thinks this is very important. Usually in a Shakespeare play or in an English Renaissance play, a verse is used by important people for important things. And for less important people and less important things, usually the play will use prose.、Um, it's also interesting because Claudio, as we know in this play, is a classic romantic. He's the guy who sees a girl and falls in love with her, and does the traditional things to try to get her to marry him. Very classic romance. Uh, and romance is often connected with poetry, so using verse for his love plot reminds us of this long tradition of love poetry.、Uh, it it shows that Claudio is a more traditional lover. Question three: Why does the meter change at two one ninety? Okay, let's take a look. We are on page two twenty nine. Here, um, the footnote to line ninety says, here, a fourteen syllable rhymed couplet. The verse form of Arthur Golding's translation of the Metamorphoses. Okay, so we know that in English poetry we usually use what's called blank verse. Blank verse is ten syllables unrhymed. 十个音节不押韵 But here it says we suddenly turn into a fourteen-syllable rhymed couplet. 十四个音节有押韵，而且是押韵是成双成对的押韵。A couplet just means two lines rhyme with each other. Ninety to ninety-four, is this true? My visor is Philemon's roof within the house is Jove. Why then your visor should be thatched? Speak low if you speak love. Well, I would. Well, I would. You did like me. Yes, it's true. This part is in fourteen syllables. Why? Well, one possible reason, because nobody took this question, is that they are actually singing or speaking along with the music. At this point, they're dancing. There's music, so maybe these lines fit the music. Fun fact: Nobody knows what the music sounds like. We have Shakespeare's plays, but we don't have Shakespeare's music. All we have are the lyrics, the songs. 
So like when you watch the movie or you watch a modern performance, all of that music is created by the director. And we don't really know what kind of music Shakespeare uh, used. So one reason could be that it fits the music, the meter fits the music. But then there's another question, which is why this meter? It says it's taken from the metamorphoses, 变形记. If you remember from freshman year, we read some uh, Greek myths, like people turning into trees, the gods coming down and toying with humans. So why choose this meter related to the metamorphoses? Well, I think the answer is here. Philemon is an important character in the metamorphoses. So perhaps the meter is echoing the subject matter. When they are speaking or dancing or singing about this story from the metamorphoses, Shakespeare uses the meter of the metamorphoses for this part. Which is quite interesting. Uh, and it also shows how Shakespeare tragedy or Shakespeare plays are not just stories, they are also connections to the tradition of literature. Question four At this place, which set of stage directions do you think makes more sense? Two one ninety four one oh five. Oh, same page. Right. OK, so. Here's what we originally have. Uh, so Hero and Don Pedro dance and then they leave the center of the stage. Who comes to the center? The original the editor of this edition says Balthasar and Margaret. These two, of course, will later on uh, be seen in Hero's window. <laughs> and um, Don John will use that as an excuse to break up the wedding between Claudio and Hero. Um, but, okay, so there's a stage direction down here. The speech prefixes in the quarto text for Balthazar's lines read Bena and Balth. Some editors speculate that Baraccio is intended. Okay. So in one of the original versions of the play, it doesn't say Balthazar. It says Benedict, uh, Benedict and uh, Baraccio. So there is some uncertainty about who should be dancing with Margaret. Um, so the, the editor of this version thinks it should be Balthazar all the way. But another possible reading is uh, Benedict with Margaret first. And then when Margaret says, God match me with a good dancer, Benedict and Balthazar switch. And in the second half, it's Balthazar and Margaret. Which version do you think makes more sense? Well, let's look at the lines. Uh, first, he, the guy says, well, I would you did like me. I wish you loved me. Margaret, so would not I for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. For your good, I hope I do not love you because I have many defects. I have many faults. Which is one. OK, give me an example. I say my prayers aloud. So in Protestant tradition, if you pray, you're supposed to pray silently to yourself. If you say it out loud, they think that you are performing religion and that you're not sincere. So Margaret says that this is one of her faults. Then the guy says, I love you the better. The hearers may cry amen. Uh, he turns this fault into a merit, into something good. 
He says, if you pray aloud, then we can all pray with you. Uh, so Margaret, I think at this point, thinks that this guy is just flirting with her because she says, God match me with a good dancer. So please give me another man to dance with. So at this point, uh, if Balthasar says it's if it's Balthasar all the way, then Margaret would also be flirting. Like she doesn't actually want to change dancers. She's just like flirting back with him. Uh, but then she says, and God keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. So she wants the situation to end and does not want to develop a relationship with the man who's dancing with her. Uh, and Balthazar says, no more words. The clerk has answered, which means fine, fine, I'll shut up. So if it's Balthazar, then Balthazar is trying to flirt with Margaret and Margaret tries to shut him down. But what if it's Benedict? Uh, Benedict flirting with Margaret and then Margaret says, I want to switch guys. And so after she says this, Benedict and Balthazar switch and Balthazar says, Amen. Amen means your prayer has been answered. So you ask for another guy. Here I am, another guy. But this line is also kind of flirting because like only God can answer prayers. So when Mar uh, when Balthazar says amen, like, you know, ta-da, here I am, Margaret uh, also feels like this person is not serious. So she uh, also asks this new guy to stay away after the dance. And Balthazar says, fine, fine. So which version do you think makes more sense? I mean, personally, I think it makes more sense for two guys to switch. That's why I wrote uh, the, the separate stage directions. Uh, but this is a point of uncertainty in the play. No source can tell us the uh, what Shakespeare actually meant. We can only look at the situation uh, and different directors for different performances will understand this scene in different ways. So this is a place where different directors can make a significant choice in how to perform the play. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll do question five.
Question five. There is a silence suggested at this point in the play. How would you perform it? How, what do you think the actor should do at this point on stage? Two one two ninety one. We're on page two thirty one point five. 第两百三十一点五页 So. Uh, during the party, Claudio suspected that Don Pedro actually wanted to marry Hero himself. Uh, at this point, uh, Leonardo finally uh, hands Hero off to Claudio, not Don Pedro. And at line two ninety one, Beatrice says, "Speak, Count. Tis your cue." She's talking to Claudio. She says, Claudio, it's your turn to say something. So this line suggests that Claudio is not speaking. He's not talking. So instead of talking, what could he be doing? A few groups took this question. One group said maybe he's crying in joy. So like we can see him moving his head, using his Eyes、uh, using his hands to wipe his eyes. Another group said,、uh, "Maybe he is、uh, so stunned that、uh, his he's trying to say something. His mouth is moving, but no sounds are coming out."、Uh, and then another group said, "Maybe he's just." Standing there with his mouth open, like he's so surprised, he doesn't know what to do with himself.、Um, I think all of these answers are pretty good. When we think about this question, we're thinking like a director. How do we turn the words of the play into a performance on stage?、Uh, and so, at this point, when there are no words. What should the actor do?、Um, when we think about this question, we have to remember two things. One is that the actor himself has to feel like this emotion is accurate. Whatever we ask the actor to do, it has to fit with the emotion of this moment, according to the actor.、Um, so. If the actor does not think that Claudio is the kind of person who would cry tears of joy, we shouldn't ask him to do this. The other thing to remember is that when you're performing, you're not just performing for one person in front of you; you're performing for the entire audience, from the very front to the very back. So whatever you ask the actor to do can't be too small. If he cries tears of joy, he can't just stand there with tears coming down his face because the audience in the back can't see that. So he has to actually use body language to show that he's crying. Same thing with the、uh, like being so shocked that he. Doesn't know what to do. He's just standing there with his mouth open. If you ask the actor to do this, there has to be some way to let the audience know that he is specifically not moving. One way to do this is by using contrast. If you want Claudio to stay perfectly still, then you can ask the other actors to kind of shift around or move around a little. So that the audience can notice that Claudio is not moving at all.、Um, so when we think about plays, you know we're reading the words, but we should remember that a play only lives when it is performed. Most plays, and that's one reason why I showed you the film before we、uh, started reading, to give you a general idea about these people, about these characters. You know, ideally, I would show you a performance of the play,、uh, but Shakespeare plays can be quite long, and we don't have enough time in class. 
OK, so those are today's discussion questions. Do you want to ask anything? OK, um, so before I remind you what to read next week, I do want to also remind you that um, movies are not exactly the same as their source material. You know, the play is longer than two hours, but the movie is not. So some things were changed. So please remember that if you're using the movie to help you remember, not everything will be the same. Um, also, if you missed the beginning of the movie, I put the film on Moodle here. You can click in there and find the movie. Uh, and then if you don't know how to add subtitles, here is a YouTube video teaching you how to add subtitles. Um, you can't rely entirely on the movie because in the exams, it says you must give specific evidence not from the film. So if your evidence is in the movie, they did this or they said that, that does not count. Your evidence has to come from the written play. 就看电影可以帮你回忆，但是你到时候作答的时候不能用电影当证据。OK, so what should you read for next week? Hang on. Before next week, please finish. The end of Act 3. Whoa. Two, three. OK, so um, let's take a look at. The beginning of next week's. Selection Act two, scene three. OK, so we are now on page 233. Enter Benedict alone, so he's now alone on stage. Benedict boy. So he's calling for somebody. Enter boy, Signor. Signor is Italian for Mister. Benedict, in my chamber window lies a book. Chamber means room, bedroom. So in my bedroom window, there's a book. Bring it hither to me in the orchard. Hither just means here. Uh, hither technically means come here. So bring it here to me in the orchard. So this tells us where we are. We are now in the orchard, Guoyuan. Boy, I am here already, sir. So the boy is saying, but I'm already here. You want me to go and grab something and then come right back? Benedict, I know that, but I would have the hence and here again. So yes, I do want you to go and then come back. Exit the boy, so the boy leaves the stage. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. So he thinks that it's strange. I wonder means I think it is strange that somebody who sees another man being a fool when he falls in love, behaves like he falls in love. Yet, uh, and then after laughing at this man and his foolish ways, he thinks it's strange that such a man could then become the kind of person he would laugh at by himself falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. Claudio is this kind of person. So in the past, Claudio would join Benedict in laughing at those men who fell in love. 
and yet here Claudio himself has fallen in love. I have known when there was no music with him but the drum and the fife. So back then, the only music Claudio cared about was war music, the marching band. The drum, the fife is a kind of flute. It's a short flute, has these on deeds. And it's used to keep the time as the army marched. The drum and the fife. And now had he rather hear the tabor and the pipe. So these two instruments are for parties and peacetime and celebration. I have known when he would have walked 10 miles afoot to see a good armor. So he would have walked a long distance just to see a good piece of armor. Uh, armor is defensive clothing. And now will he lie 10 nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. A doublet is a piece of fashionable clothing. So in the past, he would do great efforts for new armor. Now he would make the same great efforts for new fashion. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. Okay, to be wont to. In modern English, we still use this sometimes. It means to be in the habit of. Uh, in modern English, we usually see this in a different form. Uh, sometimes you will see the phrase. Uh, as is his want, which means as is his habit. Or as he is wanted to, which means, uh, again, he has this habit. So in the past, he had the habit of speaking plainly and to the purpose, straightforward and direct language like an honest man and a soldier. And now is he turned orthography or orthography? Orthography is the art of writing. So in the past, he would speak clearly. Now he speaks like somebody who's writing. His words are a very fantastical banquet. Just so many strange dishes. So his language is like a meal with many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? Would I one day also fall in love and think and behave like this? Converted means to change religion. I cannot tell. I don't know. I think not. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. So I don't know what love could do to me. Maybe love would even turn me into an oyster. Uh, but I'll take my oath on it. I swear. Till he have made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. So I will never fall in love until love does something miraculous to change me. One woman is fair, yet I am well. So here one woman does not mean a specific woman. He means a woman. One woman is fair, which means beautiful, yet I am well, which means I am not lovesick. I am still healthy. I'm still myself. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, graces here just means uh, good um, attributes, good aspects of character. Till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. So until I meet a woman with all of these advantages, I will not love any woman. 
Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise or I'll none. I'll none means I'll have none. I will not have her. Virtuous or I'll never cheapen her. To cheapen a woman in this sense means to have sex with her, to make her value lower. Uh, it's a it's also a pun, because uh, uh, when he's talking about value, he's talking about virtue. May the virtue also means uh, virginity. So he's saying if she is virtuous, then I would if she is all of these things, including virtuous, I would have her and therefore her value will lower. But if she's not virtuous, she would not have that much value in the first place. And so he would not have to make her value lower. So it's a kind of joke. Sorry, girls. Fair, again, beautiful, or I'll never look on her. Mild, which means her personality is very soft and smooth and easy to get along with. Mild or come not near me. <laughs> Noble, or not I for an angel. So even if a woman were an angel, if she's not noble, I would not have her. Of good discourse, which means that she can hold a good conversation. An excellent musician, and her hair shall be of what color it please God, which means any color. He doesn't care about the color of her hair. You know, that's a that's a long list of requirements. Do you think any woman can do all of that? I think it's very, very unlikely. And even if he does find this kind of woman, she probably would not be single. So this entire speech is basically saying, I'm not going to fall in love with any woman. Uh, another interesting point, he says that the woman must be fair, which means beautiful. But actually today in modern English, if you call a person fair and you're talking about their appearance, what you're saying is that they're blonde, jingfa. We know this is not the meaning because here he says the color of her hair could be any color. Ha, ha is not laughing. Ha is, oh, the prince and monsieur love. Uh, so Monsieur is French, and we know that France is famous for its romance. So here he is still laughing at Claudio. The prince is Don Pedro. Uh, Monsieur Love is Claudio. So he's still laughing at him. I will hide me in the arbor. The arbor is the part of the garden for trees. Uh, in the U.S., they still have a holiday called Arbor Day. Uh, arbor means tree. So, okay, enter Prince Don Pedro Leonato, father of Hero, and Claudio. Don Pedro. Okay, so at this point, Benedict has hidden himself. They can't see him. Come, shall we hear this music? Ye, my good lord, ye means yes. How still the evening is, as hushed on purpose to grace harmony. So still here means quiet. How quiet the evening is, as if it was quieted down in order that we can hear the music. Don Pedro, apart to them. Apart here means that it's not to everybody on stage. He's talking to specific people. In this case, the only person who cannot hear them is Benedict. 
See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Claudio, apart in reply. Oh, very well, my lord. The music ended will fit the kid box with the pennyworth. In other words, once the music has ended, we will go and trap Benedict. Enter Balthazar with music. Don Pedro, come Balthazar, we'll hear that song again. Balthazar, oh good my lord, tax not a uh, good my lord means please. Tax not so bad a voice. Tax here means use or like uh, make use with effort. So don't make me use such a bad voice to slander music any more than once. Slander means to give a bad name to. Wu uh, Minghua, Fei Bang. So he's saying, I have a bad singing voice. Don't make me sing again. Uh, but I think he's being polite. Don Pedro, it is the witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection. So this means only the truly great people say that their greatness is not great. The witness of something, this proves something, this proves excellency, uh, greatness, when you put a strange face on your perfection. Uh, again, in Shakespeare's time, the word strange is a negative word. It doesn't just mean odd, it means different and bad. So Don Pedro says, the more you say you can't sing, the more I believe you can sing. I pray thee, which means please, sing and let me woo no more. Woo originally means pursue, like chase a woman. But if you think about it, what is a man doing when he chases a woman? He's trying to get her to agree to be with him. He's trying to get her to, to agree to something. So here he's using this metaphor. To woo Balthazar means to get him to want to sing, to change his mind. Balthazar, because you talk of wooing, I will sing. Okay, since you talk about pursuing women, I will sing. Since many a wooer doth commence his suit, her suit, to her he thinks not worthy. Yet he woos, yet will he swear he loves. So just like you are trying to get me to sing, even though I think I'm a poor singer, so do many lovers try to chase a woman when he thinks he is not worth uh, that woman. Like that woman is much better than he is. Therefore, I will sing. Don Pedro, nay, pray, nay means no. Nay, pray thee, come. Or if thou wilt hold longer argument, do it in notes. So like, stop talking, start singing. If you want to keep arguing about this, please argue while using singing. So whatever happens, Don Pedro just wants him to sing. Balthazar, note this before my notes. Note here means like pay attention to. Note this before my notes. There is not a note of mine that's worth the noting. So again, I don't think I'm a good singer. This line is also interesting because again, the play is called Much Ado About Nothing. The word nothing in Shakespeare's time is pronounced noting. So this line is also echoing the title of the play. And so there's also a pun here, noting and nothing sound the same. Don Pedro, why these are very crotchets that he speaks. Note notes for sooth and nothing. Like shut up, start singing. And the music starts. Benedict aside. Uh, aside means he's talking to himself. Sometimes it says uh, aside to somebody. That means he's talking to somebody else, but nobody can hear them. In this case, he's talking to himself. Now divine air, air means music. 
Now is his soul ravished. So this transports his soul. It makes him moved in his soul. Is um he's talking about Don Pedro. Don Pedro seems to be moved by the music. Is it not strange that sheep's guts should hail souls out of men's bodies? So sheep's guts is talking about the musical instrument that Balthazar is using. So isn't it strange that sheep's uh, guts can produce such a moving music for people to listen to? Well, a horn for my money when all's done. So um, music, I think, is worth the money to pay for. The song. Uh, this is the song that we heard in the movie. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. Ever means forever or always. One foot in sea and one on shore. Very close to the Chinese phrase, uh, to one thing constant, never. Then sigh not so, but let them go. And be you blithe and bonny. Blithe means happy, bonny means healthy. So let these uh, cheating men go and stay happy and healthy. Converting all your sounds of woe into hey, nonny, nonny. So instead of like crying and sighing, give happy sounds, celebrate. Sing no more ditties, sing no mo. Uh, ditties and mo are like short songs uh, that are not very serious. Of dumps so dull and heavy, so don't sing about these sad things. The fraud of men was ever so since summer first was levy. So ever since summer was 72. Leafy, yes. Ever since summer was full of leaves, men have always been cheaters. Then sigh not so, but let them go and be you blithe and bonnie, converting all your sounds of voto into hey nani nani. Okay, that's the song. Don Pedro. By my troth. Troth means truth. So uh, in Chinese, we would say wo shua. A good song. Balthazar. And an ill singer, my lord. So he's still pretending or he's still uh, maintaining that he's not a good singer. Ha, no, no, Faith. Thou singst well enough for a shift. So you can sing good enough for a song like this for a while. Faith is a mild oath. It means in faith. In Chinese, I guess we could say Shuozende. Benedict aside, still talking to himself. And and means if, sorry, if. And he had been a dog that should have howled thus, they would have hanged him. <laughs> so Benedict also thinks that Balthazar is not a good singer. If he had been a dog who had howled like this, howl. Hao, long hao ma go hao. They would have hanged him. And I pray God his bad voice bode no mischief. I hope that he does not create trouble because of his bad voice. I has as leaf have heard the night raven come what plague could have come after it. Okay, so the night raven, Yeli de Uya traditionally brings bad luck, such as the plague, Wen Yi. So, but here Benedict is saying his voice is so terrible, I would rather listen to the night raven, even if it brings the plague. Don Pedro, ye Mary, dost thou hear, Balthazar? Do you hear that, Balthazar? I pray thee, get us some excellent music, for tomorrow night we would have it at the lady hero's chamber window. Again, chamber's bedroom. So tomorrow night, they want music under her window, not in her room, right? Her room has a window. It's looking out on like the garden or something, and they want music 
under her window. 在窗下 Balthazar, the best I can, my lord. Don Pedro, do so farewell. Exit Balthazar. He leaves the stage. Come hither, Leonato. What was it you told me of today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? 开始下陷阱 Claudio, oh, I, I means yes. Aside to Don Pedro. So he's secretly saying this to Don Pedro. Stalk on, stalk on, keep going. The fowl sits. There's the bird. So like they're hunt, it's like they're hunting birds. So like keep going. The bird is still there. Really, he's talking about Benedict. He knows that Benedict is hiding behind the tree. Okay, and then after this dash, Claudio is now talking to everybody. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. Talking about Beatrice. Leonardo, no, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviors seemed ever to abhor. So to dote on means to like. Uh, so Leonardo saying she likes Benedict, the same person that from all of her outward behavior she seemed to hate. Abhor means hate. You can tell because. H O R is the beginning of the word horror, horrify, horrible. So to abhor means to to hate, like it's horrible. We still use this word today in modern English, in very formal context. It's 非常正式的用语 Benedict aside, is it possible? Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner? So is that really what's happening? Well, let's. What does the footnote say? One o one. Is that the way the wind is blowing? Leonardo, by my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. Wow. So she doesn't just love him; she loves him strongly. Uh, and enraged affection is also a pun, right? Because enraged can also mean angry. So Leonardo is basically saying the more that she is angry at Benedict, the more that she actually loves him. It is past the infinite of thought. It is impossible to understand. No amount of thought can grasp this point. Don Pedro, maybe she doth but counterfeit. Maybe she's faking it. Claudio, faith like enough. It could be. It seems likely. Like here means likely. Leonardo, oh God, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion. Came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Discover here means uncover. To show. So Leonardo is saying, if she's faking, she is the best faker in the world. No fake could come so close to the real thing. Don Pedro, why? What effects of passion shows she? Okay, so you said that she uh, shows her love. So what exactly is she doing? Claudio, aside to them, bait the hook well. This fish will bite. So if you describe her actions uh, passionately enough, Benedict will fall for it. Uh, this is, of course, he's talking about fishing. Bait your hook, Rugo. Leonato, what effects, my lord? Uh, and then if you remember in the movie, at this point, they all kind of hesitate. They think about what they should say. She will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She will sit you means. 
sit. Yeah, you you is an expletive. Bigger you is either. She will sit. You heard my daughter tell you how. So at this point, this doesn't make sense, right? Leonardo is still trying to think of something. He's just saying whatever he thinks of first. She will sit. That that's not very special. Claudio, she did indeed. So my daughter is Hero. Uh, so Leonardo is pretending that Hero has talked with Claudio about how much Beatrice loves Benedict. Now, of course, she will sit does not really say a lot. So Don Pedro says, how, how, I pray you. Like, how does she sit? What does she do? You amaze me. I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. I thought she would never feel another man's love. Uh, invincible means like cannot lose. Assault means attack. Leonardo, I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. Benedict aside, I should think this a goal. A goal is a trap or like a it's um it's a trying to fool somebody. I should think this a goal, but that the white bearded fellow speaks it. So white bearded fellow here is probably talking about Leonato. Uh, it could be the it could be Leonardo, it could be Don Pedro. Not sure. Knavery, knavery is like underhanded actions. Knavery cannot sure hide himself in such reverence. Surely such an old and important person would not try to fool me. Claudio, apart to them. He hath tamed the infection. Hold it up. So he has bitten the bait. Sangola. Tain means taken. Don Pedro. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? So has she told Benedict? Leonato. No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. Torment means suffering. Claudio, tis true indeed. So your daughter says. Shall I, says she. Uh, here, this is hero, pretending hero says this. Shall I, says she, that have so oft encountered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? Sorry, this is hero saying that Beatrice said that should I write to to the man I keep mocking and tell him that I love him? Obviously, the answer is no. She can't bring herself to do such a thing. Leonardo, this says she now when she is beginning to write to him. So when does she say this to herself? When she picks up a pen is, and it is beginning to write. So this paints a picture of Beatrice sitting at her table, starting to write a love letter and thinking, it's no use. He thinks I hate him. For she'll be up 20 times a night, and there will she sit in her smock. A uh, smock here is like night clothes, nightgown. Shui Till she have writ a sheet of paper, my daughter tells us all. Ah, so he says she will sit there. So this is uh, Leonardo trying to explain what he meant when he, when he said she will sit. What is she sitting to do? She's sitting at her table in the middle of the night, trying to start a love letter and failing and trying again and failing again until she fills an entire sheet of paper. Claudio, now you talk of a sheet of paper. So now that you mention this, I remember a pretty jest your daughter told us of. A jest means a joke. Leonardo, oh, and when she had writ it and was reading it over, 
She found Benedict and Beatrice between the sheet. This is also a pun. Uh, between the sheet, first of all, means like all over the paper. But it also can describe two people having sex between the bed sheets. So it's it's a pun that puts Benedict and Beatrice together. Claudio, that. Leonato, oh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, so into small, tiny pieces. Railed at herself, so she was angry at herself. We're talking about Beatrice, supposedly. That she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew would flout her. So she was so uh, lacking in proper behavior that she would actually try to write to somebody that she knew would reject her. I measure him, says she, by my own spirit. For I should flout him if he writ to me. So if he one day wrote a love letter to me, I would also reject him. And that's why I think he would reject me. Yea, though I love him, I should. Even though I love Benedict, I would still refuse his letter. Claudio, then down upon her knees she falls, Shakui, weeps, Tongku, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses, Suzhou. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. This is a bit over the top. You didn't go. But OK. Leonato, she doth indeed. So you're right. That is exactly what she does. My daughter says so. And the ecstasy, like a Huan, has so much overborne her that uh, overborne here means overwhelmed. That my daughter is sometime afeard she would do a desperate outrage to herself. So, according to Leonato, according to Hero, Beatrice loves Benedict so much that she might kill herself. Do a desperate outrage to herself means to kill herself. It is very true, Don Pedro. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other if she will not discover it. So if Beatrice doesn't tell Benedict, somebody should let him know. Some other means some other person. Claudio, to what end? So what good would it do? He would make but a sport of it. To make a sport of means to laugh at, to mock. And torment the poor lady worse. So if he ever found out Beatrice loved him, he would just mock her even worse. Don Pedro. And he should, again, if he does this, it were an alms to hang him. It would be a good deed to, to hang him. She is an excellent, sweet lady. And out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. So nobody disagrees that she is virtuous. Claudio, and she is exceeding wise. She's very wise. Don Pedro, in everything but in loving Benedict. So loving Benedict is the one thing that she does that's pretty stupid. Leonardo, oh my lord, wisdom and blood combating in so tender a body. So wisdom and then blood means passion. So when the brain and the heart fight within such a person as Beatrice, we have 10 proofs to one that blood hath the victory. So nine times out of, uh, sorry, 
10 times out of 11, the heart will win. I'm sorry for her, as I have just cause, being her uncle and her guardian. So because I am her guardian, Jin Huren, and her uncle, I feel very sorry for Beatrice. Don Pedro, I would she had, so if only she had, bestowed this dotage. Remember, to dote on means to like. So if only she liked me, I would have doffed all other respects and made her half myself. So if she loved me, I would give up my noble title just to marry her. I pray you tell Benedict of it and hear what I will say. Ah means him. Hear what he will say. Leonardo, word good, thank you. Do you think that's a good idea? Claudio, Hero thinks surely she will die, for she says she will die if he love her not, and she will die ere she make her love known. Ear means before. And she will die if he woo her, rather than she will bait one breath of her accustomed crossness. So, according to Claudio, according to Hero, Beatrice says that if Benedict doesn't love her, she'll kill herself. If uh, she would rather die than tell Benedict that she loves him. And if Benedict tries to pursue her, she would rather die than stop mocking him. So in conclusion, Claudio says, Hero thinks surely she will die. She doth well. Uh, this is the right thing for her to do. If she should make tender of her love, so if she should express her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it, he'll refuse it. For the man, Benedict, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. Had a jing sheng fei zhang ke bi. And then, so the rest of this dialogue, now they are talking about uh, Beatrice would never tell Benedict that she loves him because Benedict would reply in such a terrible way. So if you think about this part, first they tell they let Benedict think that Beatrice loves him, and then they let Benedict think that the only thing preventing them from being together is that Benedict himself is too mean. So the effect of all of this is to get Benedict to change his behavior toward Beatrice. Will it work? We'll see next week. Ah, I mean.